Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we're gonna check out what is happening, what is new in bodybuilding world. As of today, we are a little bit over two weeks out of that pro show in Italy. I think it's Yamamoto, Italy a pro show. A week after that, we got another pro show in Spain. And these two shows, we're going to have pretty decent competitors, actually. So we're going to have Blessing of Audible, also Regan Grimes, Nathan Diasha, and Good Vito. So these two shows, yeah, they're European shows, they're not in America, but they're going to be a lot of fun because they are very very competitive and it's really hard to predict who's gonna win, who's gonna place where any of these four guys really can win these shows, I mean they are all show winners, like Nathan Diasha won who knows how many shows at this point, like 7-8 shows Regan won a couple of shows but he had a good off season so I think he made some progress, Blessing of Audibu who won New York Pro and Indy last year, who kind of failed at, uh, at Chicago and I think he's coming with a redemption, I think he's coming very very strong and we also got uh, Good Vito who is having his um, IABB Pro League debut, he turned pro but he was never compared against these top pros, so it's gonna be very very interesting, but as far as Blessing, like I said, he's coming with a redemption he's coming strong to this show as you can see this is him right now at 16 days out of Italy and blessing about him he had like a really good offseason if you guys watched his videos during his offseason he looked crazy big he looked enormous he looked really really freaking huge and then at the, at the Chicago he was big like he was heavy I think he was around 280 but his conditioning was completely off, and it didn't look like 280, I mean, the guy that won the show, Justin Shire, he was only like around 220, even less, maybe, so he was much, much lighter, but he looked just as big, if not bigger, I mean, he won the show, so Blessing really failed with conditioning, I mean, he was prepping alone, before, when he was prepped by George Farah, he did very good, right, but George Farah stopped working with, uh, with big bodybuilders, because his health is apparently not very good, and he can't stress uh, his, himself too much with these open guys, because they are a lot of work, they're hard work, so Blessing decided to prep alone, and it didn't work out, it, it usually doesn't. And before we continue talking about Blessing of Audible, I just want to tell you guys about the Vintage Brawn, an amazing tasting protein powder by the Old School Labs. If you guys want to try it out, the link is down below. Make sure to use the code EVAN so you help me out and you get a 15% discount. Now back to Blessing. So now he has a new coach, Cameron Cheek, and it seems like they are pushing the conditioning. It seems like they're doing well. But based on these photos that I'm seeing these days, yeah, his conditioning is improving, but I don't know, it seems like he's losing the size, he's losing a lot of fullness, and, you know, he was, once again, he was very big in the offseason, you would expect him to be, like, at his biggest this year, but it turns out, best case scenario, if he's lucky, he's gonna look like the way he looked when he won the New York. Because looking at his photos, especially the ones from behind, I mean, looking at his uh, lower body especially, like, he's losing that size, like, he doesn't have the fullness in the legs, his lower body is looking much, much smaller, and also, like, even in the back, you can kind of see that he's, that he's just smaller, he is probably depleted and flat, and that's why he looks smaller, hopefully this is just a part of the process, Hopefully he's going to look flat like this only when he's working on that conditioning and once he carves up, he's gonna bring his size back and if he truly nails the conditioning and carves up properly, he's gonna look impressive the way he looked at New York and then he might have a chance against these guys, but then there is the question of his legs, right? I mean, his legs were never really very, very good and the other guys that he's competing against have very good legs. So, I mean, Blessing has a lot of strong points, like he has like really big biceps, really peaky biceps, really good V taper, his upper body is big, he has big, big frame, you know, he's a big guy, he's, he has a small waist, pretty good aesthetics and stuff like that, from behind, from the side, his legs are looking fine, but you know, the quads, he doesn't have the best insertions, the best genetics, so I don't know, I mean, when he won New York in Indy, he was battling against Charles Griffin, who is also very impressive, but also has smaller legs, so now he has Nathan Diasha, Regan Grimes, and Guduito, all three of these guys have big legs, so it's gonna be very tough for Blessing, but you know, we'll see. Alright, next up, also at 16 days out, we got a physique update of Nathan Diasha, now this guy is saying that he was never 
in his career ever this big with this conditioning. So basically what he's saying is he's bringing his absolute best of all time. Uh, is that realistic? Well, yeah, sure. I don't see any injuries. I don't see anything wrong with his physique. Maybe it's going to be a different story on stage, but he does look very fresh, very young. His conditioning is looking very, very good for 16 days out. He looks hard. He looks full and everything. He says here that he is uh, flat as a pancake, which I believe him. There are some guys like that who have crazy genetics who never really look flat, even if they are. Like, I'm sure I believe that he's on a very low-carb diet, whatever is low for him, that he's not full, that he could be much fuller and bigger and rounder, but, I mean, he doesn't look flat to me, right? Like, a lot of bodybuilders get much flatter when they diet. I think Blessing is much flatter than Nathan is right now, but Nathan is looking fuller. And he's very complete also, like, you can't really find a flaw in his physique. Like, the only flaw that I can think of is the length of his torso. In certain poses, like uh, front uh, double and front lat spread, his midsection looks uh, very long, and like that's about it. That's the only flaw. It's about the structure. As far as muscularity, I mean, try to find a flaw. Really, you can't find anything. Like he has good arms, good shoulders, good chest, good back, good abs, like small waist, uh, big legs, calves. Even you could argue that maybe his hamstrings could be thicker. So we also got a physique update from behind. Now here you can see how hard he is from the back. I mean, in the back itself. Now look at that lower back. It's rock hard. Like He's really lean. He is shredded right now. And if he is flat here, then just imagine how big will he be once he carves up. Now you can see that his glutes are also in condition, his hamstrings as well. So he's gonna be peeled. No doubt about that. And I'm guessing he's gonna be more conditioned than Regan Grimes. Because Regan is not really known for his conditioning. And I don't think he can afford this kind of conditioning. He's not at the level of size of Nathan Diasha. And Blessing, I mean, he had enough time, I believe, from Chicago to uh, this show to get conditioned. Will he do it? Yeah, I guess he will be conditioned. But I don't think he's gonna be this hard, like Nathan. And then we got Goodwito, who is a complete wild card. I have no expectations of that guy. I don't know what he's gonna bring. But as far as Nathan, you can see very clearly what he's bringing. And what he's bringing is very good. So right now, my favorite to win this show is definitely Nathan Diasha. Yeah, I think it's a pretty safe bet to bet on him. I mean, after he won so many pro shows and uh, saying that he's bigger than ever and more conditioned than ever at this point then why would he lose? Why would he be beaten by Regan Grimes, uh, Good Beat or Blessing Awardee? But I don't see it. I think he's going to win this show. Uh, he is definitely my favorite right now. As far as that second, I believe it's going to be between Regan and Good Beat. I don't think Blessing is going to be in the top three, but then again, who knows? We'll see. We have to wait and see them on stage. You can't really judge a show based on physique updates, but if I had to predict something based on what I'm seeing, that's what I would say. So right now, I think Nathan is going to win this show because he does look damn impressive. All right, next, as we are like one day out of Masters Olympia in Romania this weekend, we got a physique update of Kamal El Gargni. So we haven't really seen a lot of updates of these guys that are doing this show. As far as the big name guys, we know Phil Klahar is doing it and he won a pro show recently in Open. He beat Hassan Mustafa, so on paper, maybe he is the favorite to win this show. We are also going to be seeing Max Charles, some other great guys, but also Kamal El Gargni, who just posted a physique update in which he looks insane. He looks freaky. Like, he looks really, really impressive, especially considering his age. Like, he seems like he is not aging at all. For the past five years or so, he has been improving or at least staying the same. I mean, he's 51 right now, turning 52 this year, later this year, and he is looking insane for that age. Like, it's crazy. He's older than Dexter was when he was competing. Of course, he's not at the level of Dexter, but he's on a very high level. So you're probably thinking, can he beat these guys at Masters Olympia, the guys that are much bigger than him? the open competitors, some of them are even active open competitors, like I said, Phil Lahar, who just won a pro show, and yeah, I think he can actually hang with them very, very well. This was Tampa, so Kamal competed here, and actually, a lot of people had him above Akim Williams, who won the show, and Kamal placed second. This was your top three, Quinton Araya, 
aka Quint Beastwood, he was in third, and this guy is like a, one of the tallest open bodybuilders today, and he is big, like he has a lot of muscle, he has great quality, he has great structure, but he was beaten by Kamal, I guess because of maturity, conditioning and stuff like that, so Quinton was third, in this show we also had Phil Klahar, who is going to be competing at Masters, who is probably the favorite, and Kamal beat him, actually Phil placed fifth at this show, now that doesn't necessarily mean anything, I think Phil was kind of off at this show and he was, and he's probably gonna be, I hope he's gonna be on at Masters Olympia because he was on when he did Orlando when he beat Hassan Mustafa, so if Phil was able to beat this mass monster then I guess it's very possible for him to beat Kamal as well. Now, of course, Hassan probably lost this show because of conditioning, and that's it. Uh, Kamal is not going to be off with conditioning. We all know that he's always on. He's always super, super hard. And now, looking at this photo, it could be just very good lighting. Uh, it could be an angle. But I think, I think Kamal is bringing something crazy. Because in this photo, he looks really freaking impressive. So, yeah, I think he's definitely one of the favorites to win the Masters Olympia, what do you guys think? And we also got some drama in bodybuilding world, I don't know if you guys caught this, but basically Jeremy Buendia, a former, I think four times, men's physique Mr. Olympia champion, who was coached by Hany Rambert, who was part of Hany Rambert's um, company, supplement company, Evoji Nutrition, I would say he was a huge part of that company, I think he really helped that company become what it is today, because Jeremy's popularity was at its all-time highest at that time, and so basically he helped Honey build up that brand. So what this drama is about, it's basically uh, Jeremy uh, making a public apology to Honey Rambert. He doesn't really go too deep into the details, but basically what he says is that he left uh, Honey's company, Evo Genetrician, uh, on not very good terms, like he had some uh, disagreements with Honey, so they, they fell apart and uh, it wasn't in like the best terms, so they had a falling uh, out at that time and they never really uh, amended their relationship, and so now after a long time, uh, hopefully Jeremy is in a much better headspace, he realized his mistakes, and he made this public apology, actually he tried to approach Honey at the Olympia, actually he talked to his wife, but Honey was very specific, he said, he said that he wanted a public apology, so this was demanded by Honey Rambert, so Honey got what he wanted, Jeremy made a public apology, and so far we didn't really get any response from Honey, not in the comments, not on uh, Honey's page, hopefully soon we're gonna hear something and that's gonna be the next news, and this is gonna do it for this video guys, some drama for the end, when Honey responds, if he accepts this apology or not, I will make a video about that, so guys stay tuned, subscribe, like this video if you enjoyed it, and if you guys wanna support me and show me some love, there is the link down below, Click on it, buy any of the old school lab supplements you like, but make sure to use the code EVAN. You get a 50% discount and you help me out as well. So thank you guys so much for all your attention. All the best guys and bye bye.